Hi, my name is Lendr Facchinetti, and in this video, I want to talk about fast forwarding while editing in Reaper. So let's jump right in. I have here an example of a piece of dialogue, and usually this is something that you want to do in long form pieces when you have a podcast or maybe uh, a video like this one. And you want to scrub through the project fast and find just the pieces that you want to remove. And usually you don't want to do that in real time just because it takes a lot longer if you do it in real time. You can do this faster if you fast forward through the material. And in Reaper, there is already a way for you to change the play rate. It's already here in the interface and you can use it like this. I will start playing and I will change the play rate to show you. Okay, so this is an example of how we can use fast forward to move through this faster. And if I don't turn on the option to preserve it. Now this works, but there's a problem. It turns my voice into this high pitched funny thing. And to fix this, it's really easy. You can right click on this button and you can click here on preserve pitch in audio items when changing master play rate, or you can use this action as well that amounts to the same. So when I change this, pitch in audio items when changing master play rate, then I sound funny. But if I enable this, then the Now I am not sounding funny, I'm just sounding fast. And that's what you want when you're editing. Now, the thing is, when editing, sometimes you want to move at a faster rate, but sometimes when you want to double check a cut or you just want to hear something in real time, it's good to have a way to play in real time. So we can use fast forward to move through and it's good to toggle between fast forward and real time when you're editing. You want to double check a cut, you go back to real time. And then you double check the cut and you want to move on, you enable fast forward again. But there is no easy way for you to toggle fast forward on and off. There are custom actions or actually not custom actions, scripts that allow you to change the rate, but not that toggle the rate. Well, I created some scripts to fix this. I created some scripts that allow you to toggle the master play rate. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install and enable these actions. And then I will go over how I built the action and show you the code for it. So here is the action. Here is the script. And I'm going to play with these values. Okay, so this is an example of how we can use fast forward to move through this faster. And if I don't turn on the option to preserve pitch in audio items when changing master play rate, then I sound funny. But if I enable this, then the pitch is preserved and I don't sound funny, I just sound faster. And that's good for editing long pieces of dialogue. So when I'm transitioning from one play rate to another, uh, it is, sounds kind of weird for a moment, but then it picks up. I also included some scripts to slow motion. If you want to hear something slower than usual, maybe this is good if you're editing video or something like that, then you can do this as well. Move through this faster. And anyway, just because it was easy to do, I did slow motion as well. So how do you install these scripts and how do you use it? You need to install Repack first, and if you don't know how to do that, this part is platform dependent, so you should watch some other videos here on YouTube on how to install Repack. The Reaper blog has a great video showing you how to install Repack and also everything else you would want to install in Reaper. Anyway, once you have Repack, you can come here to import repositories and import the repository, the link with the URL will be in the description below. So this is it, I already have it here. You just paste this link here and click OK and tell it to synchronize packages and install packages and you will get the actions, the, the scripts. And I find it useful to assign this to some custom key. I, I use F for fast forward, so I can just hit F on my keyboard and you can see the play rate changing here on the right which is super useful when I'm editing. I just hit the, the key that is already on my finger. It is already here on my left hand. My index finger is already on the F. So that's easy to toggle fast forward on and off. And then, yeah, that's what I do. I usually don't have the actions menu open. I just, I, I have the project open it's and I hit faster. F. And if I don't turn on the option to preserve pitch in audio items and change master play rate. Okay. That's a simple action. 
And the reason why I'm making this video to show you this action is first because I think it's useful and I couldn't find it anywhere else in Repack or in Reaper in general, but also because I want to dive into the code that I had to write for this. So if you're not interested in learning how this works or you're not interested in writing Rescripts, you probably can stop watching now. But if you're interested in Rescripts and in Lua, then keep watching because I'm going to show you the source for this and it has a couple of interesting tricks, though it is a very simple action. It is a very simple, uh, it, it is in fact one of my first scripts. Anyway, you can cl click here on edit action and you can see the surf source for this. So what's happening here is I want to change the rate based on the name of the file. This way I can have, and this is a cool trick, I can have a bunch of files with different names like 150% or 125% or 175% and I have all of them here uh, as you can see here under the actions menu I have a bunch of these but they are all the same source because the action is looking at its own name and then deciding which rate to use so this is super cool it's looking at its own name to decide what is the percentage to run at. And that's what this first line is doing. It is using this Reaper method called get action context, context. And this method is going to return a bunch of information for you. Let's go to the documentation and show you first what this is returning and also how to kind of navigate the documentation because it isn't super uh, intuitive at first. So you can click here on API help as I did. API help, it's going to open a document that is, was created for you by Reaper with not only the documentation for the current version of Reaper that you're using, but also for all extensions you may have installed. For instance, if you have SWS, as you probably have and you probably should have if you don't, then it also has the documentation for all of those extra functionality as well. And then what I did here is I looked for something that would give me the, the the name of the file. So get action context. And this returns a lot of things, but I was probably looking for name or file and I, I did some command F looking for something like file name or something, whatever. And I found this and then it returns a bunch of things, but I'm not interested in all of these. I'm just interested in the file name. So I can use the Lua function select to get the second return from the call. And then I'm using another Lua uh, method, another, another Lua function called string match, which is taking the first element, which is a string, and finding some piece of it. And this is going to return not only the current the, the, the name of the action, but also the whole path for the action. So it's going to return this whole string with all the path. And to check this, one way to work with this environment, it's this environment for developing custom actions uh, re-scripts in Reaper is similar to the environment for JS effects. And if you're interested in learning more about how all this works, then you should watch the other video on this channel in which I introduce a bit crusher and I go over the whole environment here for developing in Reaper. This time I'm only going to show you the things that are relevant for Lua. So here I have, for instance, if I want to look at the return of these, I can, for instance, do this. And because this variable is a variable that is global in Lua, I'm not saying local, so this variable is global. When I save, this automatically runs. You can see that it changed the play rate when I saved and I'm saving again and again just so you can see that it's actually running every time I save. So when this is saving, it is running and I can look at here on the, the watch variables. The debug is the string with the whole name of the action, which is a long string. And I'm only interested in the part at the end, the name of the action and the percentage. That is the only part that stays fixed because if you have a different, for instance, username, this part of the string will be different. And if you don't install the script via repack for some reason, then your path here will be different as well. Anyway, so this is returning the name of the file and then the, the string match part is getting just the percentage. 
And that works because it is using a Lua pattern, which is similar to uh, regular expressions, if you're familiar with those. But even if you're not, the idea here is that letters just match themselves, but there are some special characters like parentheses that you have to escape with percent. Usually you would escape them with backslashes, but in Lua patterns you escape them with percent signs. Same with the dash, you have to uh, escape that. Or not the dash, the hyphen, this is a hyphen. And then here, in this part, I am getting uh, in parentheses, so I'm saying I'm interested in this part, so everything else I want to match just to make sure that I am on the right part of the string, but this is the piece that I'm interested in. That's why I put it in parentheses. And this says, I want digits because I'm looking at things like 150, and I want one or more of them. So if your file has a dash and then a space and then a percent, percent sign, this will not match. And then I, I want a literal percent sign, so I have to use percent sign percent sign because <laughs> for the, there is a coincidence here. The, the file name has a percent sign in it. And then a dot is also a special character in a Lua pattern, and I have to escape it using it using another percent sign, so I end up with three percent signs. And then dot Lua, and this means end of string. So this part with the string match is getting me the number, for instance in this case, 150. And because I'm doing this capturing of the percentage dynamically, I can actually use exactly the same code for all the actions. So what I did is I wrote this action and then I copy and pasted the file several times and changed just the name, which is a clever way to reuse code, I think. Anyway, so now that I have this, I can assign this to the debug variable and I probably am missing some parentheses. I save, okay, so now I have the number 150, which is the percentage that we want here. And then I convert this to a number and I divide by 100 because the Reaper action that changes the play rate doesn't want a number that is a percentage, it wants a number like this. So 150% is 1.5, so I have to divide by 100. And that's my play rate. That's the play rate that I want to change to or that I want to toggle. And then there is this other action that I found by looking at the documentation and just looking for uh, something like play rate. And I looked at all the options and eventually I found one that, that, that did the thing I wanted to do. And that's how you work with rescripts. The documentation isn't awesome. The API is super weird. The methods are, they have weird names like add project marker, add project marker to uh, get focused effects, get a focused effects to, it is all over the place, but you can f search. It's a single long document. And if you don't find the thing that you're looking for, you can always Google. Someone on the forums may have posted something related to what you need. And it just comes with a lot of trying and experimenting and making mistakes. It isn't like awesome documentation, but it's good enough, at least for the things that I had to do. Anyway, now I have the play rate. I have the method that changes the play rate. All I have to do is call it with the, the argument. So what I'm doing here is first checking what is the current play rate, because I want to toggle, remember. So if the play rate, that is the current play rate, is equal to the current, the, the, the play rate that I want to change to, if this is the case, then I am going to change the play rate back to one. So currently this is the case. As, as soon as I save, then the master get play rate would be 1.5, which would match the play rate. And then in that case, I want to return the play rate back to one. Otherwise, I want to set the play rate to 1.5 in this case. Now, there are a couple of things that are interesting here. The first is why is there, is there this zero as an argument? That's because in many cases, the API expects a project because you may have multiple projects open. In Reaper, you can just open multiple projects in tabs. So if you are interested in the current project, you have to pass zero as an argument, and that is common throughout the API. Of course, it's usually what you want, unless you're doing something esoteric. It may be, it, it probably should have been the default to have this, but you have to be explicit. And then the other thing that may be interesting is this construct, this n and or. 
I'm using this because Lua doesn't have a ternary operator. In other languages like JSFX and C and really JavaScript, many others, there is this construct that looks like condition, question mark, um, true case, uh, otherwise false case. Lua doesn't have this construct, but it, what it does have is short circuiting in and or. So what I mean by short circuiting is that if the condition is true, then you run the true case. But if the condition is false, you never run this part of the code. You never run this expression. Also, if this is true and this is true, then it's going to return whatever is in here. For instance, three. If the condition is true, then this whole expression will return the number three. But if this is false, then it will not try to run this expression because false and whatever will be false and false or whatever will return this part. So if I have something like this, then the condition is true, I return three. If the condition is false, I return four. So that is a roundabout way of doing the, 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 the determination of what is the play rate that you want to use. And that about does it, that wraps it up. That's how you work with rescripts. That's how this rescript works. And you have a bunch of, op of options in the options here. You, you have different play rates that you may want to use. And if you want to create another one, if you, for some reason, want to 150%, you can just duplicate this rescript, change its name. It will pick up the percentage from the file name. Super cool. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something about Rescripts and it is super fun and interesting to write these kinds of things. And I'll definitely cover more Rescripts in the near future. So if you are interested in this kind of thing, then stick around and subscribe to the channel. I see you around. Bye.